I can't believe it's time for the Sunday papers once again. But more importantly, we got corrections, baby. Woo! We got corrections, baby. Won't you read all about it? Read all about go. it. Read all about it. Hear ye, hear ye. Oh. End of the year. This is it. This is the end of the year. We did our we did our roundup a week early. Of the and year, I, you mean? I thought it was one of the best podcasts we've ever done. Really? Well, well it's good it was a highlight reel. It, yeah. <laughs> well, this one, you're coughing. We're on a we got a hard out, and uh, and we're teasing that next week is going to be our uh, predictions for 2024. Yeah. So hopefully. In the first seven days of 2024, nothing happens that we would have predicted, like someone dying. We always have our death pool. We could record it earlier in the week. We could. Um, yeah. Also, that brings us to, if you want us to uh, weigh in and predict something, you know, we have the usual suspects, who's going to win the Super Bowl, who's going to win the Oscars, who's going to win the election. Uh, Stock market, up or down. Maybe some uh, personal stuff like, uh, will I be in a relationship or uh, will, where will Craig, Craig, where will Greg's uh, stand up our air? Things like that. Yeah, so, that's good. We're going to come up with a bunch of stuff, but we'd love to hear from you guys. What would you like to see us predict for 2024? We got an election coming up, which I forgot about. A little, you did. You're like, <laughs> I, I pasted it in the old one. You're like, well, no, some of these don't work. It's not an election year. <laughs> but wait a minute. Isn't it weird that obviously the elephant in the living room is, you know, whether or not Trump is just going to run. And I mean, if the election were to happen to, not that I believe in polls anymore, but if it happened today, he would be reelected president. And I, that's kind of the thing that people are, pretending isn't possible because otherwise there would be people in the streets already campaigning for anybody else. I don't watch the news anymore. So maybe this is, uh, I haven't heard it, but maybe this has been talked to death already. I think, and this is not partisan. I'm literally being just reporting the facts here. I think there's enough people who, who don't want Trump back that it might be the biggest ver- voter turnout ever. And as Democrats have said so often, they need so few people, additional people to come out to secure a win. For the Democrats. Yeah. So I think we'd see, I mean, we already started to see it last time, you know, he ran, which is uh, both times, uh, you know, voter turnout campaigns, get getting the vote out. Well, Which, the biggest thing also is Robert Kennedy, who can be the kingmaker this year because he's got a huge percentage. I don't know what it is. Chris, maybe you can look it up. But like in polls, he's pulling like 15 percent of the population. And that's clearly enough to swing the election in either direction because he's been a Democrat. But now he seems to have a lot of talking points that's, that skew a little more to the right. And he's running as an independent. So if he were to take this up to the to the to the red zone and then declare, that's it. He picks the winner. I can't have a president who has a voice that's similar to mine, and I, I can't listen to that voice. I, I know. Have, I already have to hear this one. If he had a good <sighs> voice, he would be a lock. But that's it. I can't. How is he going to go toe to toe with uh uh who's the who's the president of of Canada? I mean. Oh, Trudeau? Trudeau. That guy's beautiful voice. He yeah. trounced him in a debate. We got big issues with Canada right now. Whether or not maple syrup tariffs are going to come in. Whether or not their one famous music act a decade is allowed to get citizenship. Other big issues with Canada. Um, all right. We recorded. When was the last time we recorded? A week and a half ago? Two weeks ago, right? Two weeks ago. We've been through a lot. Yeah. Of good things. A lot of try. I, I was in Spain, which I loved. Oh, yeah. Tell me all. I've heard very little. We haven't really spoken since you got back because you got back and then I left the next day for uh, the desert. Right. Uh, oh, RFK, 22% of the popular oh, wow. vote, according to polls, which are unreliable, yeah. but still, that's a fucking chunk. 
and I think, we I think and that we don't steals really more from Trump than the uh, than the left. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people on the left that uh, I mean, forget the vaccination thing. If you put that to the side, Kennedy has mostly he's got some Republican talking points, but he's also got that last name. And there's a lot of people that don't read the headlines, don't look into issues, and they go, I fucking, uh, I have a hard on for the Kennedys. Well, there's also, uh, apparently, I've, I've heard many people say, all right, listen, look into the crazy for yourself. See how crazy it is. It's probably too crazy for you. But, but what you can do is go to his website on the biggest issues for the country and see if they don't align with your values. Right. So I'm, I'm guessing they do. I think a lot of, I like a lot of his platforms. I you know, I think he's a, I think he's great except for the crazy factor that could hurt him when they run ads and uh and there's a lot of people that, you know, majority of the country is not anti-vax and right. that that could really hurt him. Anyway, um, we'll get to we'll get to all of this next week. Let's talk more about Spain. Spain what was happened? amazing. What did you like? What did you learn? Barcelona was great. Well, you know, what I learned is my family is not very curious and everyone, <laughs> everyone in my family except me hates museums. My uh, dad might hate museums the most. Your dad, I thought your dad would love museums. He literally said to the girls, they were sitting on a bench because they just wouldn't walk. I'm walking into rooms. In these rooms, there are Picassos. Like, it's not like... Yeah, hey, let's go to a gallery in uh, fucking Dallas and check out, you know, some artists we've never heard of. So uh, Guernica are arguably top five paintings of all time in terms of fame is is in the next room. So my dad at one point goes, I mean, I think we've seen enough Picassos, haven't we? <laughs> one. They had seen one Picasso. And I think what he meant by Picasso's is paintings. I think that's what he meant. Like we've seen enough paintings. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Your dad is so fucking hyper. I could see him not being able to settle down. He needs needs to keep moving. We would go on tours when I was younger, like because he felt obligated like to, so museum tours like, you know what, let's go this way. I think we can go this way to literally my, if it was in a movie, it'd be like, this is too over the top. My, my sister and I were very small. We're kids, probably, you know, around the 10, 11, 12 range. And we're like, but dad, the tour's going this way. He's like, I, I know, but I, we're going to meet him. They're going to probably go this way. We'll meet him in that room. Sister goes, dad, there's, there's a velvet, there's a rope. That room's closed. No, no, no. We go around. The, I, look, I'll tell you, how, I'll show you how to remove the rope. Like, just a complete lunatic. Well, yeah. Does he, does he remind you of anybody? Does he remind you of the guy who calls United Airlines and books a one-way ticket to London so he can get into the, uh, into the, the waiting room or the, 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 the uh, what yeah. do they call it? All rules don't apply to me. That, that was the valuable lesson. He no, not me. only don't they apply to you, you actively look for uh, a way around everything. Right. Uh, I mean, including selling pins that you are si- signing, sealing, and delivering from your apartment Oh, koozies, yeah. Co- what did I say? Pins. Yeah. Because that's yeah, what they- you do. <laughs> you fuck, you're the same exact way. I think I've, I got the best combination of all. I got a little of that, you know, whatever you want to call it, that sort of, I don't know if it's chutzpah, but uh, that run and gun thing uh, combined with I love art. So in museums, I kill it, even if I do jump off the tour and do my own tour. What so about anyway, the Gaudi stuff? Did they like the Gaudi stuff? They did. Well, that, 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 church and i've been in some of the greatest churches in the world like if if you you know in italy all over italy and everything uh england for all over europe i'd say this is the best church i've ever been to in my life which was oh the there's Ga- no question the gaudi designed uh i forget it with the basilica Ga- i forget the name of it's i should this, look it up it's the same but it's the gaudi basilica i mean basically everyone knows to go there and it's, it's the sagrada familia yes yeah, sagrada familia a name i cannot stick in my head but the idea is was well, he, he put the statues on the outside also he was a complete lunatic gaudi and the more you see you're like did the city was it kind of a running joke that they just let a lunatic keep building things now for not only did he keep building it his entire life, 
it's it's still not done. It's been a hundred years and they're still building the cathedral. Oh, it's not done at all. And they think it might be done in 2040. He died, I think, in the 20s. Yeah. And, and when you got, look at the, when you look at the scope of the construction in those years where there was no there was no major electricity there was no fucking no. you know 20 story cranes right i don't know how he did it and but what was so it's the most uh, art it's the most creative i think like and the most artful and I, everyone's going to kill me, right? Of course, Sistine Chapel, what could be more artful? But like, it's, it, so the idea was he put the statues on the outside along with just like putting a fruit on top of a spire, like a fruit basket, like really weird stuff. But he didn't want statues to clutter inside. And then inside are pillars that are not always perpendicular, straight up and down. They, they, they move a little. And then, and the idea was he wanted the inside to echo a forest, and it is so cool inside and the light. And it's called, I think it's called the Cathedral of Light or the Church of Light. And it's anyway, it's amazing. I saw they're having an exhibit there. Miro and Picasso are basically both from Barcelona. And um, and so they had, there's, they each have a museum there and they had a dual exhibit. So you buy a pass and it's good for both in the same day. And And my dad's head would have exploded. It's I've never seen that many Picassos in my life. And Miro might be my new favorite artist. Yeah, there's a Picasso Museum in Barcelona, which is his. And they have like the the the, the pencil sketches for all of his major artworks. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, and also like that that church truly accomplishes what a church is supposed to do is you feel God. You I don't care how atheist you are when you stand outside that church and then inside of it you feel something transcendent happening. Yeah. And it was great. And then Madrid, you know, had more of the energy of New York City, which I loved. And oh my God, do they take Christmas seriously. And Oh yeah? <clears throat> yeah, and then I walked all around. I went to the, what, what they claim to be the oldest restaurant in the world. Um, and it's Little Bars and George and I, my brother-in-law, who's great. We're always celebrating his birthday every year at this time. I mean, obviously it's the same time every year, but it's, it's two days before Christmas. That's same and, as Aaron's. They have the same right. birthday. Yeah. And we went into these little vermouth, these little vermouth bars. And, sh and, and then in Barcelona, there was a sherry bar. Um, and we're like, I'm not really a fan of vermouth or sherry, right? Loved both of them. Yeah. They put a little water in them and it was amazing. And I mean, they're like, it's like that, you know, when you think McSorley's is old and then you're in this place, you're like, McSorley's is brand new. Yeah. Well, I remember uh, going to, um, we went to Barcelona. Owen was on this U.S. soccer team and we went to, we went to Spain for a bunch of tournaments. And I remember the Cortados, the Cortado bars. This is be, yeah. this is before anybody in the U.S. had heard of Cortados and they make them with, ugh, it's the, the greatest fucking coffee beans. And then they put in like a, uh, uh, what do you call that milk that's, that's sweet? Condensed um, milk? Yeah, they put in like a little condensed milk. Yeah. And me and my mother-in-law, we were drinking like five a day. It was just, <laughs> just bounced. Because you get exhausted looking at these fucking museums, you know? Right. And so we would just get these little bursts of energy with this Cortados. And, uh, you know, it, Barcelona, is it's a little overrun. Was the tourism ridiculous? It wasn't so bad. I mean, maybe it's because it was, you know, Christmas week. Uh, yeah. And in Madrid, you know, there's the famous Mercado. And I was kind of like, well, what's the Mercado? I thought it might be like um, booths of merchandise stuff. So it's basically, it's like the farmer's market, dare I say, in, in on third, you know, on Fairfax and third in L.A. where there's a bunch of like butchers. Seafood, your seafood guy, your butchers, everything's on ice. But then they also serve you food like to eat there. And kind of like, this is where Third Street, this is where all cities should take note. Every city should have a Mercado. It's, it's, it's kind of like a permanent firm, farmer's market where your butcher guy is, you know, they have hard booze with the ice. Like they don't, it's not a pop-up. And, but it's like a giant, 
uh, like beer and wine mall. And yeah. at least 10 places. And there was one stand that just served Aperol spritzes. And the girls lost their minds. And then there was like the beer and there was no hard alcohol, but there was the vermouth, the sherries. And what we saw there, coming full circle to what I was saying about it being Christmas week, is we saw Madridians, if that's their name, but we saw the locals out partying. And it was families. Like, like my, my kids were like, there's no place in America where I've seen so many old people getting hammered together. Yeah, I think that's a very European thing. You see it in Italy. You definitely see it in Ireland. I yeah. mean, our country is the only one where it's like, there are bars. When you think about bars in the U.S., it's literally, there are dives where it's underage drinkers. The, you know, everybody knows that you can get in under 21. Then you've got like the college bars. Then you've got the right out of college bars. Then you've got like, you know, it, it's so segregated by age in this country. It's crazy. People over 40 don't go out in America. I mean, obviously some do, especially travelers. There's hotel bars. I get that. And then there's restaurants and, and people. That's where Americans tend to do with their drinking, I think. But that's not social. That's no. not very social. This was so the most social thing. Groups would all of a sudden start singing like happy. And then the other group over there starts talking to this group. And it was just, you got this charge out of it. It was so social. Yeah. Well, it was great. Uh, Owen's in uh, Mexico now. He, he spent his first month of his trip in Guatemala. And uh, he sent pictures of families there. Like, you know, they have these festivals where it's like mothers and fathers and grandparents and dogs and everybody's outside and fire, fireworks are huge. And then just street food, which was like, you know, a tortilla with like a mixture of like orange and red and green, like all kinds of crazy shit. He said it was the most delicious, uh, I was going to say Mexican food. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he, him and his buddy, his buddy Gabriel is just like this renaissance man. He's, if you had to pick a kid you wanted your son to travel with, it's Gabriel. Fluent in Spanish, has, uh, took his father's boat with Owen and sailed it to Catalina, the two of them. Wow. And then at night they went diving for lobsters that they grilled on board. Oh, no, I, and I saw where they, they dove. I remember when we were there together, and th there are great whites in the area, just a fact. Right. And then he took him on this crazy backpacking, camping trip in the Sierras where he made, you know, uh, made the campsite. Like he just does everything. And, uh, and so he meets this girl, uh, he got down there before Owen and he met this girl who's from Mexico and she invited him and his friend to Christmas dinner at their house in Mexico. And, and, you know, they're thinking, all right, this will be a sweet little, like, uh, hacienda, what do you call it? A little Spanish, little Mexican house. So they get there for uh, Christmas Eve, and it's the, 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 the girl's father is the mayor of the town. They've got an enormous mansion. They have like 200 people over for Christmas. They have like uh, the most expensive tequila known to man, and they're just fucking pouring it. A DJ, they dance till 7 o'clock in the morning. The girls, he sent me pictures, are fucking these dark, black, shiny haired, olive skinned, gorgeous women. And they, and they're hanging all over my son and Gabriel. And, uh, the family told him they could stay for a few more days. And I mean, he's having the time of his life and it's like hiking volcanoes during the day. And then like part staying in youth hostels that are literally on the sand on the beach where like the young people, they're all like his age. They're all like 23 and they go from each hostel has like a nightclub and you just stay up all night. And then they he's having it's it's unbelievable. It's great. Cut to Owen on the plane ride home with two kilos of cocaine up his ass. <laughs> you know, uh, hey, that hey. night that night at the Hacienda yeah. wasn't exactly free. It's, he has an Italian accent. <laughs> That's weird in Mexico. I, don't think I was doing any accent. That's the saddest <laughs> part. Okay, wait. Speaking of food, so all right, in in Madrid, Laura has uh, my sister 
has paella, which she doesn't really do because she's not a seafood fan, but she got a vegetarian paella, which I'm sure they all rolled their eyes at. Anyway, loved it. I go back to my hotel room that night. I'm like, perfect. I had the hardest time finding a gift for her. Nailed it. Went online. Ordered a paella pan. Like nice. a pretty good one that they'll have forever and all. Excellent. We go down to breakfast and George is there. Laura's not there at all. Laura exploded out of her head and her ass all night ah. long. <laughs> with the most intense food poisoning she thinks she's ever had. Oh my God, that's the worst. Where she then couldn't even hear the word paella for the rest of the trip. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, perfect. it was under the tree when we got home. That was the gift. Uh. <laughs> Cook some eggs in it, bitch. <laughs> Uh, there is no worse feeling. I, I would imagine a kidney stone is, you know, I've had one of those, but food, bad food poisoning, you want to die. It was really bad. She was knocked out. Actually, I, I made a mistake. That was in Barcelona. We took the train that day. Uh, the high speed trains, by the way, too fast. Definitely really? too fast. Really? Oh, I was just thinking, how is this not fly off the tracks all the time? I don't, yeah. I don't know if it's like a... Like, a, do they have, you know how like roller coasters have wheels under the rail as well so it won't fly off? But like, what if a kid puts out a log and the whole way I'm like, no cows, no cows, please, no cows. Like, <laughs> we're going just through farmland. Yeah. How at, long is the train 200 ride? 200 miles an hour. How long's the train ride? Two and a half hours. It used to take seven. So it's like 500 miles away. Uh, I guess so. I think we were up towards 200 miles. I believe God we were damn. 200 miles an hour. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. insane. Wow. Um, and it didn't, you know, it didn't feel like anyway, but on the train, she got sick still. Like it was still going on the next day. It was terrible. Um, so I was in um, Fort Worth, Texas last week and uh, I got booed. Oh. Yeah, just here's the thing about Texans. Like, they they just, I said I'm from California. Boo. The whole crowd. Boo. I get that. I get that. Dude, why? I'm, you're hosting me in your city. I'm your guest. You know, you came to see me. You paid to see me. Go for the ride. Just fucking get on board and go for the ride. Like I was thinking about that with, um, uh, who was it? That's kind of like. Um, I mean, when you, whatever, if you're going to see somebody just your, their politics don't have to match yours. Booing you is fun though. I think that was it what they fun. were, that, that's yeah. what they were doing. It is fun. Um, I am in, where the fuck am I right now? I'm in Milwaukee, yeah, Wisconsin, what? and I'll be here through New Year's Eve. If you're around, if you hear this podcast on Sunday, New Year's Eve, I will be at the improv in Milwaukee. Big, beautiful showroom. Holy oh, shit. Cool. I think it holds like four or 500 people. It was pretty packed last night, actually. And, I, I'm, and I'm not going to say they were all my fans. I'm used to doing shows where like three quarters, if not more of the people, came to see me. Like fans of mine hear about the show on the podcast or, or my whatever promotion. This was like 10% of the people knew who I was. Wow. I think, I think it's just a big week for comedy. And, uh, and they came out. So it was a very different experience. Like yeah. I usually kind of have them in my pocket out of the gate because they're excited to see me. This and, was like, and boo. and boo me. Uh, and this was like, I had to, I had to establish who I was, which was kind of good in a way because yeah. you know, you're obviously, um, it's, it's more of an even playing field, but, um, it was fucking, it was work. And the guy that I'm working with, Dion Curry, who's a great comic, who I bring on the road with me a lot, um, he uh, smokes pot now. He never smoked pot his whole life, and he started a month ago. And now he gets high before he goes on stage. And he's like, Greg, I'm telling you, it opens your mind. You'll go places that you didn't think you could go. And so uh, I'm going to... Tonight on the late show, I'm going to get high and then go on stage. Oh, no. All right. You think it's a bad idea? No, the late show is probably, you know, maybe you always are incredibly present. So maybe you share that. Yeah. Tell them. Or at least at some point, if it feels right. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think as soon as I fuck up, which I will, I'll just say, sorry, I've never been high on stage before, but I thought I'd try it. <laughs> sorry, I'm 20 minutes late. Listen, guys, I, right. right out of the gate. Um, one quick story I want to tell. So on the, on the plane ride back from Spain, it's like, you know, a little under 12 hours. And there's a guy next to me and he's kind of flamboyantly gay. And he's on his, he, he's there with a dog and it's a Frenchie, a French bulldog. And he is so fawning. It's the gayest thing I've ever seen, but like so fawning over this dog. And everything was like, he's so worried about the dog. And it was preposterous. And so anyway, I would look over, but I would constantly hear things. The dog's wrapped in blankets. And it wasn't until about an hour and a half in, I realized, and this is true, the dude was in the middle seat and he gave the dog the aisle seat. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> the dog was right near me and everyone who went yeah. by stopped and pet it and all that stuff. But I didn't even put that together because there was so much movement and everything because yeah. he, had, he had it surrounded by pillows and I'm surprised he didn't have an eye mask for the fucking thing. Um, it well, was we're going to talk about a couple of gay guys later and their dogs. dogs oh, that yeah, the, the viral girls. video of the yeah. gay guys is fan screaming so at American Airlines is the greatest. fantastic. Um, all right. Well, by the way, I want to thank you guys. I last time we were on the air, I told you that my Instagram follower, I was at ninety eight thousand five hundred. And I said I wanted to get one hundred thousand by New Year's by the new year. So. You will have one day left to follow me. And right now, I am at, I went from 98,500 to, I'm now at 99,600. So if you could push me over the top, go to Greg Fitzsimmons on Instagram, throw me a follow. Let's get to 100,000. And if we get there, I will show my balls on the next podcast. Whoa, these. Aren't you uh, supposed to give people a reward when they help you? Yeah, I guess positive reinforcement. And people, I, my, my goal has been solved. People pushed me. Uh, I have over 3,500 followers now, so I did it. Well, maybe you should do a shout out to your followers to follow me. That would be or nice. I, should, I, I don't think there's anyone who follows me that doesn't follow you. But I guess I should show my balls maybe next week. Hope, if right. you get there, we'll, we'll, we'll four balls. We're promising four balls. Four shaved balls, four shaved balls, and a cock with a vein on the shaft. No, no, no. Logo this week comes from, well, actually, I put down two. You get to choose which one we use on the show, Matt A's or Irish Shane's. Considering it's New Year's Eve, which one looks more New Year's Eve-y? I'd say the second, right? The tuxedos? All right, so Irish Shane, and I believe that's from... The Entertainer? Uh, is it The Entertainer or is it uh, Butch Cassidy? It's Paul but, Newman and Robert Redford. I think that's when they, they're running their illegal gambling operation. Okay. Very is it good. called Thank The Entertainer? You. Am I spacing out? That was the song. Uh, the Sting? The Sting. Sorry, yeah. The Sting. Yeah. Could I be I The Sting. Well, somebody can uh, let us know. And Matt A. will do you next week. Thank you all for your submissions. Yeah, I like, and I like as Matt always, too. It's a new year. We need a lot of new songs. We need a lot of new logos. Put on your creative hats. Get into your workshops. Send them over to FitzDogRadio at gmail.com or just go to the FitzDog website and you can email from there to us and we will appreciate you so much. It's just so amazing looking back and how many years we've been doing this podcast and every single episode We've had uh, a piece of art from you guys to present. They said Two it couldn't pieces, be done. The song. They said it could be done. Uh, the song uh, from Adam Copeland. It is, uh, again, uh, you don't have to be a great musician. I'm not, it's not a backhand account. Oh, come on, Adam's <laughs> you don't, fantastic. You don't need a, a high-tech recording <sighs> studio. You just need passion for the show. It comes through and people love it. Corrections. Donovan S. says, in regards to your comments about the show Jersey Shore, the people of New Jersey are not really that upset about the show because everyone knows every single one of them was from New York, with the exception of Sammy. Anywhere you go on vacation, you always know if there are New Yorkers. They are 
incredibly obnoxious. Well, oh, Donovan, yeah. um, we will send you more. We have a lot of extra Italians in the Bronx and Staten Island and New Rochelle, and we will put them on a high-speed train and get them down to Montauk. Not Montauk, Ma Manasquan. <laughs> uh, Hugh O'Connor says, uh, Joa Quinn Phoenix pronounces his name Joaquin. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got about 25 people correcting my pronunciation of Joaquin. Are you fucking serious? Did you guys really think that that's how I thought his name was pronounced? I think He's at this point they did. At this point they did. <laughs> oh, I think. my God. <laughs> Yeah. He says, sometimes I have a hard time when I see Oaxaca in print, which for some reason I pronounce Oaxaca. It is pronounced Oaxaca. O-A-X-A-C-A -A -A is Oaxaca. You got it right, Hugh O'Connor. Hugh O'Connor. Yeah. Oaxaca. Mike, Mike Zakara says, just a reminder, your producer's name is Chris Denman. You've referred to him as Mike Denman. On at least two separate episodes, <laughs> love you both. Love the koozie even more. Um, I had a producer for many years uh, named Mike, and uh, I I confused the two. Chris Denman, my apologies. We value you. We treasure you. We mock you. We're attracted to you. He's the Den Man. He's the Den Man. You got that part right. Uh, tour dates coming up. Den Theater in Chicago, January 13th. Get your tickets. It's going to sell out. Atlanta Punchline, January 18th through 20. Portland Helium, February 22nd through the 24th. La Jolla at the Comedy Store. Tampa Side Splitters coming up the month after that. Also, we want to talk to you about, oh, you're going to buy some tickets? You're going to New Orleans, Mike, Come right? on, man. I'm looking up New Orleans right now. I'm heading there. We're talking about like game time, in case you don't know. An hour. And uh, how do I get, hold on here, New Orleans Pelicans. No, no, but there's a bunch of, hold on, let me put this in here. I'm sure, oh, it's searching for events. Got it. Um, hold on a minute. Oh, you know what it is? It's stuck on Germany because I opened game time when I was in Spain. So what can we see? This is internet, game time is international? international oh dude. my god why don't they list that in the because we have listeners all over the world but if you want to find tickets to sporting events theater so here's uh, nashville comedy. The music city bowl a college bowl game with auburn in it 39 bucks that's today at 1 p.m by the way um then there's the titans uh the jaguars at the titans the titan home game 33 bucks but it's gonna go down and then I'm going to look up while you do some reading here. I'm going to look up uh, New Orleans. All right, listen. It is it is such a no-brainer. We have a lot of sponsors on this show. This is one that we are passionate about. We use it all the time. Game time is the fast, easy way to buy tickets. Sports, music, comedy, uh, everything you can see. And it's last-minute deals, all-in one, all in prices. You can get a view uh, from the seats of what your seat is going to look like. And they got a best price guarantee. It's unbelievable. We've both used it for many concerts. Uh, the thing is with buying tickets, you stress out. Am I going to get the tickets too early and then the prices go down? Well, with game time, you keep an eye on things. And, uh, and they, there's so many ways uh, to see what's happening in your area. It highlights stuff and, and you track it and you always get the best deal. Um, and it's We're, easy. The app is a piece of cake. Couple taps. It's in your phone. No transferring. No downloading or printing. It's right there. We're thinking of seeing Billy Strings. Is amazing guitarist, uh, and he's playing there three nights, and he's playing New Year's Eve also. And the Sugar Bowl is down there. Let me see. The Sugar Bowl is a the second biggest game in the country, and right now. Tickets are 217. This is on January 1st, and I'm waiting till that bad boy goes down. Who's playing? Yep. Oh, we're talking about it down here in the sports All right, we'll talk section. about it later. Okay. All right, so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code PAPERS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code 
P-A-P-E-R-S for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, yep. lowest price, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Speaking of a guarantee, uh, the holiday season is going to wear you down. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Why? Because of food, serving it, buying it, cooking it. Now there's a real easy way to do it. Every plate. Every plate is going Love every to- every plate. Yeah, we got, we got deliveries of it. Did you get yours? Yes, and it totally enjoyed it. It was amazing, and uh, it's about 50% cheaper than your, az- your average casual fast meal. Uh, ditch the takeout, save the money, and get fresh, satisfying meals. Um, it's just, it, it's, the, there's fewer trips to the grocery. That, to me, is the biggest thing. You got people over. Like, we've had house guests for the last eight days. Um, and uh, it's been half the time going to the store and organizing and doing all that. These are quick and easy recipes, easy cleanup options, and it's ready in 30 minutes or less. So you spend more time with your family, arguing about what to watch on Netflix. Uh, it's like having a prep cook also. That's the part I love. The meals come, they're pre-portioned ingredients. So yeah. you're ready to go. You just, the, you just start with the action. You just start cooking, and it's all measured out for you already. It's also cheaper than any other... Uh, meal kits. This is, uh, uh, you know, I, I used to think that it that these kind of things are super expensive, but now you can get the same deliciousness at a much lower price. Um, High quality ingredients, and I I thought this was cool. It's the sustainably sourced seafood, and they even reference it meets the Monterey Bay Aquarium seafood rankings, ooh. which is the measure of what you what seafood you should be eating. 26 tasty and affordable recipes that change every week. Uh, <clears throat> breakfast 24-7. They got the 15-minute or less meals, feel-good food, big batch faves. Get it all. And now uh, uh, get a meal for $1.49 plus $1 steaks for life by going to everyplate.com slash podcast, entering code 49, the number 49 papers. Subscription must be active to qualify and redeem $1 steak. Again, go to everyplate.com slash podcast and enter code 49papers uh, and, and you're going to get the $1 steak deal with the subscription. It's the That's, most affordable meal kit plan out there. It's really great. It's up to $110 value, so do it now. All right. We are going to get into... Oh, all this stuff for I can't wait to do the predictions next week. <laughs> Maybe we should enlist our listeners to make predictions too. What's that? Yeah, well, we asked for suggestions. I don't have paper. You got paper? Buddy? I got some paper. Hold on. Hold on. I got a wrapper here. Front page. Uh, why don't you read this because it's a Florida woman, even though it's in the front page section. Florida woman filed a $5 million federal class action lawsuit against the Hershey Chocolate Company, claiming that its seasonal Reese's treats were deceptively marketed because they didn't have faces. Oh, I want $5 million. According to the lawsuit, Cynthia Kelly sued the Hershey's company because its jack-o'-lantern treats were advertised with a mouth and eye drops on the packaging, but didn't have any on the actual chocolates. In addition to jack-o'-lantern, the class action uh, also included Reese's peanut butter pumpkins, Reese's white pumpkins. Okay, there's a lot of Reese's here. I'm not going to read them all. Um, All the way down to the peanut butter shapes assortments. Uh, So (laughs) how does she get the idea? I want to read the lawsuit, quite honestly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what were the damages? What were the emotional damage? First of all, the candy's free. All you do is go to people's houses and you get it for free. So what are you complaining about? Yeah. Um, and, and also, what's with the wanting faces on your kid's food? I don't want fucking faces on the food. What kind of sicko wants to humanize what their child is eating? I'm very upset that blood doesn't squirt out when you bite into it. There's no veins. There should be a screaming noise. I want $5 million. And I had a perfect meal planned out. Oh, my children, they just eat lobster faces. 
And then we <laughs> finish with a nice dessert where there's other cute faces on the desserts. Right, right. What? Well, yeah, uh, what? what? It's just crazy. I got to think of some lawsuit. My mother, by the way, has qualified for two solid lawsuits, but she's very Catholic. And I begged her ref- to go through with one, and I'm not well, a I'm not a litigious guy. Well, one of them was she was at her car dealership, and the garage door came down, hit her in the head, and she was knocked unconscious and had pains in her head for two months. And fatigue. and the place shit a brick, and apologized profusely. Yep, because it and, was clearly their fault. And then when she didn't sue, they didn't pay all her medical costs. This was a multi-million dollar deal. She's an 83-year-old woman. Yeah. Are you fucking? And then she got heart surgery and they put the implant in wrong. Her, her pacemaker, <laughs> they had to crack her ribs open again and redo the entire thing. Yeah, another doctor found it and goes, they did this wrong. They yes. put it in the wrong valve or whatever yeah. it was. Right. I mean, these uh, are slam dunks. And this was money in my pocket. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> especially if that other one doesn't take you know Dude, in the, the other know, valve do you know i'm the executor of my mom's will do you know how awful that is you get paid by law <gasps> oh do i oh that's yeah. pretty sweet no but i remember gonna... the first time i heard it the first time i heard about it i then learned that they were getting paid i'm like what a dick He's yeah. one of the he's one of the brothers, and then I heard it's like a law. I guess in some states. Well, York I think maybe. it's a lot of fucking work. I would gladly pay my sister or brother to do it, yeah. but I'm also I'm the executor, which means I also have to tell them they're getting less money than me, and that's going to be awkward. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get on to a form. Uh, I I don't know if we did this story. Did we do this story? Did you the read Pennsylvania this? guy? Yeah. I don't think, no, the woman who, who yeah. punched, no, no, I don't think we did All this. All right, a former Republican candidate for lieutenant governor in Pennsylvania and a right-wing parental rights activist allegedly slugged a teenager in the face and fed underage minors booze at a birthday bash she threw for her daughter. Yeah. That's what you do. My mom used to just bring down buckets of ice. These uh, kids have a lot of rights. The right to party, the right to drink, the right to get punched in the face. Right. I bet they had chocolate with faces on it and uh uh clarice schillinger punched a 16 year old boy in the face three times first of all if you're a 16 year old boy i can see i can see letting a 36 year old woman get in one sucker punch how'd she get the other two in especially that third one shame shame on you so she got a charge with simple assault harassment and providing alcohol to minors also, her boyfriend faces charges for simple assault and harassment. The intoxicated mother hit a teen in the eye, and the ex beau is accused of punching the same teen in the face and assaulting another young attendee. Tell me this videotape of this. That would be, it sounds like a, uh, the check in area for Spirit Airlines. <laughs> That's the vision I have for this. Yeah. Um, I would say. If this girl had another party, a lot of people are coming. Yeah, this is like out of euphoria. This is like a party, a high school party out of euphoria. Yeah. I remember I used to have parties a lot because we had this crazy basement. It was just old, worn out tiles and a pool table. Oh, I was down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we would have these parties and the whole fucking town would come. We used to get three kegs. We would kill three half kegs. It was fucking insane. And one time, uh, this kid pulled a knife. Dave Vada pulled a knife on somebody. and He later pulled a gun on somebody else. And, um, and I remember, like, uh, a big fucking fight broke out. And, and everybody, and my, my father came down. My father was a big, big fucking tough guy. And he just started throwing people out. But then the party continued. We threw out the guy with the knife and kept going. We had kegs to kill. Can't believe your dad was home while all those kegs were being killed. Oh, no. He would hang out at the keg with my friends. He would drink with us. Oh, well, it's better than punching him in the face. You're right. Um, here is a new story. Here we go. Porn producer. Uh, you want to read this? Mike, what's that? Yeah. Sorry, you were breaking up a little. Porn producer Michael Lucas signs Israeli rocket. So this porn guy autographed 
an Israeli rocket, and now he's facing a boycott from the adult film stars. Wait, Michael Lucas, didn't he do Star Wars? Uh, right. A pro-Israel adult film producer says his career is being targeted by pro-Palestinian porn stars because he tweeted an image of an Israeli Defense Force missile he signed. Ha ha ha, I actually asked to write my name, Michael Lucas, 51, owner of porn production shop Lucas Entertainment. Hold on now. (laughs) Maybe it's just (laughs) Wookiees fucking all day. How does he get the name Lucas Entertainment? Yeah. You would think George Lucas would sue him. Even knowing he wouldn't win, you could tie it up in the courts and it would cost George hardly anything. Well, especially when he put out Return of the Red Eye. I thought that that was (laughs) a little on the nose. So he tweeted on December 17th, and it was with an image of the signed projectile. Uh, The backlash was swift. Anyone who thinks writing notes on missiles is some kind of sick flex is an accessory to murder and genocide of innocent Palestinian civilians. In my book, an Iranian-American porn star um, told us more than Oh, I noticed you skipped over the name. You're not going to read the name? (laughs) Sharak Maznavanajad. <laughs> that must oh, be their stage name. Oh, Sharak Maznavanajad. Give me your rock hard cock. Sharak me. Um, yeah, he, he has over 800,000 followers on X, though. Look at that. Wow. Uh, and then there's a boycotts. Boycott Lucas Entertainment. I'm sure that one's going to be misunderstood. Everyone's going to stop watching the latest Star Wars. Yeah, let's let's overlook the uh, this the seventeen year old runaways coming into fucking L.A. on a Greyhound that are swept up and put in a room with guys jacking off in their faces an hour later. Let's overlook that over a photo he took of a missile. Yeah, let's dig in on this issue in terms of human rights and dignity. Is it one of those things where you know all those jokes where uh, you get a tattoo or you sign the penis? But it becomes a different word when the penis gets. It's almost like yeah. one of those. That's what I got reminded of. Yeah, that was that great old joke. Um, yeah, it's a word that works when it's abbreviated as well. I heard a good joke. Oh, uh, this guy walks in the front door and his wife looks up and the guy's got a pig under his arm, and the man says, "This is the pig I've been fucking." And the wife goes, "You're fucking a pig," and the guy goes, "Who's talking to you?" <laughs> yeah. It's an old one, right? It's a chestnut. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a good, it's an oldie but a goodie. Speaking of which, let's get into entertainment. Here we go. Another oldie and goodie. Dave Chappelle bought the laughs Wednesday night at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel in Hollywood, Florida, but wasn't amused when someone in the audience was using a cell phone to record him. Chappelle cut short his show after catching the man in the act, calling him out and alerting him to security before scolding the audience and walking off the stage, shaking his head in apparent anger. Wow. It happened near the end of the performance. Uh, he noticed the man <clears throat> recording. Uh, he admonished him. So, I mean, here's the thing. When you're Chappelle, they always put the phones in like a, a lockable sleeve. Yep. And um, and apparently they all have to sign NDAs. No, I didn't sign. But that's an, next. I don't think that's huh? next. No, that's next. The end. NDA, oh. The NDAs will be next. But I do think when you buy the tickets, in a way, I might be wrong because I saw them here in Nashville. There's like it's almost like a contract to follow the you know to follow the rules, and the his rule is no recording. Well, I'll tell you what I would love for people to record me during my show and put it online. I need some video. There's so many guys. Do you know how many guys like Bert? They they bring a whole camera crew on the road to videotape their shows and put it online. I need someone to do that for me. Yeah, illegally. And then it'll give you the excuse to walk off early too if you're just not oh, feeling it that night. nice. Especially when yeah. I'm high and you get paranoid. And off. What if I get high and I get paranoid on stage? Why are all these people looking at me? I, I'm betting that's going to happen. Winners at the 2024 Golden Globes will be scoring more than just a coveted statuette at the ceremony. Victors and presenters will also be racking up the riches with an opulent swag bag that costs, ready for this, 
more than five hundred thousand dollars. It's aired, ridiculous. This will air on January seventh, hosted by comedian Joe Coy, which apparently not their first choice. There's a whole thing now where like I think a lot of people don't want to host award shows because it's a lot of fucking work. You gotta write jokes for months. Oh, and, I've been on so many of them, yeah. And you say the wrong thing and you get lambasted in the press and it's they're not good aud the Golden Globes, they're all drinking and they're not paying attention. So it's a tough audience. And uh and then of course the Golden Globes is very controversial because they didn't have any black voters. So they had like one black voter out of a hundred. And so they actually didn't, they didn't air. Was it last year or the year before they didn't air it? I think it was two years ago. Two and years ago. I think ago. maybe it came back last year. So no well, offense yeah, to Joe uh, Coy, but he wasn't, he wasn't the, the first choice. Um, who hosted it? Well, of course it's a diverse host. Now. It was uh, my, Gerard Carmichael. Gerard, right. Who, awful. Well, yeah, he tried something different. He was very casual about it. He also talked about how racist they were. Um, that part was good. Right. So I like that part. So it went from Gerard and now to uh, Joe Coy. So, yeah. But those well, gift bags, get this. So I wrote on the Oscars twice. And the first time I did, it was the first year ever there was not a gift bag. And the writers used to get the gift bags. No. Yes. And I forgot who hosted it. So the reason they went away is George Clooney went like looked through his gift bag and talked about how ridiculous it was. And then he said, I think this is how it went down. He was like, is everyone paying taxes on this? Because it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, right. And I was like, how does it get to a hundred? Like, is there a Rolex in there? So there were watches, but the way it really ran up to a high number was, I think in the one... I think it was Jeff Stilson, maybe a great writer. He wrote, maybe it was even Chris Rock who hosted. I'm trying to remember who it was. And they, and I think Chuck Sklar too, they got gift bags and there were at least five vacations in there. Damn. Yeah. No, and there's so like, jewelry. They said everybody gets an, a pair of emerald earrings worth $69,000. They're getting a $500 worth of caviar. A uh, tattoo Jesus. parlor, a uh, trip to Ireland, um, but a half a million dollars. And um, yeah, I wonder if you do. And, I, and I'm guessing the gifts skew a little white. I think caviar, trip to Ireland. These are not, they're not <laughs> courting the, the one black member of the Academy here. They really haven't gotten that diversity note. It hasn't trickled down to the gift bag yet. Rollerblades? That doesn't seem like something. <laughs> Skin. Tiki tiki torches? Why uh, would they do they even fit in a gift bag? Sunblock? That's not for everybody. <laughs> oh, I did <laughs> see that. Did you see there was a viral thing that came across my feed and the person was like, Tell me this isn't tell me this isn't true. Tell me and it was a CVS in some like crime ridden area and they had locked up. I guess they're getting tons of shit stolen. But they had locked stuff up and he's like, look at this aisle. Everything is locked up except the sunblock. <laughs> and he was like, tell me this isn't true. Tell me, tell me I'm just imagining this. Yeah. Um, I think here's what they should do. Get rid of the gift basket. Here's the rule. Everybody that wins gets to pick one person from the audience and bring them home for 24 hours. At, to do with them what they like. And then you return them, no questions asked. Yeah, it could be in a giant gift bag, a gift sack where you yeah. tie them up, bring them back. All right, speaking of that. Let's make America Florida. We're going to do this. A man's angry outburst at the Charlotte airport goes viral. We teased this earlier. A Florida man trying to get home to the Fort Lauderdale airport got a little dramatic when the flight was canceled. He was tra his traveling companion, who's his husband, was who was originally. Oh, he was also. All right. I'm not even going to read anymore. I see this viral video and this guy starts flipping out and he starts going, 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, and he's very flamboyant. Ladies and gentlemen, he's like, American Airlines has totally fucked me and starts screaming. And then another guy, and then you notice they both have horizontally striped shirts on, which are sort of matching. And then the guy's like, calm down, calm down. He's trying to calm them down, and they're both so flamboyant. And um, so I went and watched the video. And he, by the way, the, when a guy tries to calm him down, he violently throws his hands off him and continues his tirade and paced violently. And um, the guy trying to calm him down is like, remember your girls, remember the girls, remember your girls. And I'm like, what, wait, what is happening here? And guy goes, I don't give a shit. And he goes, you don't care about the girls? You don't care about the girls, Shelby and Dolly? And I'm like, wait, what <laughs> is happening so apparently it's been confirmed the girls are their dogs at home of Shelby course. and dolly and <laughs> then the guy the best was the guy at one point starts talking and it looked like he was maybe apologizing and he leaned in and this woman is sitting in a wheelchair there and he leans and he starts talking to the woman in the wheelchair he's like listen we're all trying to get home and she goes please step away and it stops him in his tracks and <laughs> He looks at her and leans back and he goes, fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. And he starts screaming, <laughs> fuck you, bitch, to a woman in a wheelchair. Oh, my God. And, and like, screaming, fuck you, bitch, to an old lady in a wheelchair at Christmas, kind of what the internet was created for. Uh, yes. A good, sale, I mean. good sales on airline tickets, um, finding a hotel in Nigeria. And fuck you, bitch, to an old lady in a wheelchair. Yeah, apparently it's it's just it's just canine uh, girls who he has who these two have respect for, not ones well, in a wheelchair. If you see the video, it sets the gay movement back several decades. <laughs> it it makes you go, all right, I kind of get what Ron DeSantis is doing. Yeah, all right. How badly do these girls need them home? <laughs> they're also, they're animals. It's, it's, it's exactly like the guy who yeah. gave his aisle seat to his dog <laughs> and was cramped in a 12-hour flight in the middle. Yeah. All right, well, listen, Mike, we made, us, we made America Florida. Let's make Australia Florida. Here we go. Australia man puts on 10 pairs of underpants in 13.03 seconds. That was the headline. I read it. I cut and pasted it right in this document. An Australian man said it took six months of training to break, it, to break an unusual world record, the fastest time to put on 10 pairs of underpants. Uh, it was 13 seconds. Previous record, there was none, I'm imagining. This is the first time anyone tried to break this record, this made-up record. Cosby set the record for taking them off the fastest. Oh, I thought it was your mom in your little league locker room. That's Wait what a I, minute. What? Yeah. yeah that's my what I, mother used to take my underwear off. No, no, you would. She'd force you to watch, but she did uh, it to the other eight guys on the team. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a record because it wasn't 10. I don't know. I think I set the record for taking the a bra off the slowest. <laughs> Uh, I, I was 13. I was at Rockwood State Park with Claire Levy, drank an eight pack and uh, six minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> Got carpal tunnel in my wrist. Took so long. Perfect. But those titties were worth it. Um, I guess this is a record and it seems like 13.03 is going to be broken. Don't we think? Well, I'll tell you this, and I'm not making this up. I sold a show to the Game Show Network this year for... Uh, and it was based on the Guinness Book of World Records. And so when we did the pilot, that was one of the things we did was putting on the most T-shirts in, oh. uh, in a certain amount of time. And, uh, and there, so I'm sure this record has been challenged many times. And the pilot, not picked up. <laughs> they shattered the record of fastest rejection ever. <laughs> Oh, I they also shattered the record for least amount of money paid to develop a project. Yeah, I'm sure they shattered that. All right, on to sports. Mm -hmm. 
So the real, uh, no real jokes or stories here, except this we got, I mean, it's today when this airs, right? No, tomorrow's New Year's. I don't even know what goddamn day it is. So Monday, New Year's Day, Michigan versus Alabama. That's the number one versus the number four. And then we got the Sugar Bowl, which is Texas, number three versus Washington, number two. And so this is, uh, this is going to be, let me... Take a look at the count. It's going to be Monday. Yeah. I would rather watch women's badminton from Austria. Come on, Rose Bowl. You're not going to watch Michigan beat the Who villain cares? Alabama. Who cares? Oh, they're the villain because your daughter goes to Michigan. No, most people hate Alabama. Mm. They're a very hateable squad. Now, don't get me wrong. Michigan's really trying to catch up to them with all the cheating and stuff. But um, they're close. They're supposedly close games. I mean, the, the quarter yeah. But the I just spread. think that you know it's so impossible to. I have a hard enough keeping track of a professional football team with the amount of trades. But with college, not only do they graduate every four years, so you get a whole new team. But now they're trading teams because they're getting paid and they're stealing players from other schools. How the fuck do you keep track? All right, let me tell me this, Mike Gibbons, Michigan fan, name. Three players not, from no, Michigan. I'm not a Michigan no, fan. go ahead. Name three players from Michigan. Oh, I probably could. That quick little running back. You got the white quarterback. <laughs> and I love the tight end. Another white dude. Exactly Fantastic. My point. Exactly my point. Yeah. All right. Let's well, get. And know what's fun to do is look up, look up the ages of some of the star college players. You'd be surprised they're they're in their mid twenties. Oh, really? Yeah. The old red shirt. Red, they, should call them gray, they should call them gray hairs. Right, exactly. Red I think shirts. Maybe, maybe Oregon's QB has been around the block a few times. Might be 24. I'm not sure. Nice. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get to international. You got it, Pally. Uh, let's see. Do we have anything here? All right. So an American couple has been stranded in Turkey and could yeah. soon be homeless if they do not receive an $80,000 refund for their three-year cruise they booked that fell through. Uh, they kept leading us on uh, until we were supposed to depart. And uh, it's called Life at Sea. And um, This was a they, hugely popular idea. They sold everything yeah. to make this dream happen. We feel completely defeated. They promised a three-year bucket list cruise with prices starting at $90,000 and rocketing up to $975,000 for a suite. Uh, by the way, have you seen a suite in a cruise ship? It's half the size of my hotel room. Uh, as of November 1st, launch date got closer. There were concerns about the quality of the ship that it was not adequately fitted for this journey. And they were even told by an engineer that the ship did not have enough fuel to cross the Atlantic. So, first of all, I'd like to see these two morons. They're going to be homeless. They, they took their retirement savings for a three-year jaunt after working their entire lives. And I want to see these two morons in a soup line, standing behind the single mom who lost her job, the schizophrenic who's yelling at himself and the abused runaway. Hey, how'd you guys get here? Well, we sold our house because we love all you can eat shrimp bars and watered down cocktails. Seemed like a good idea to blow our retirement on a cabin where you can only fit your luggage under your rock hard cot and visit cities so played out that they hate the tourists. Seemed like a good idea at the time. I can't believe the ship doesn't have enough fuel to get across it. Whatever that detail was across the Atlantic. I thought most cruise ships ran on diarrhea. <laughs> so there's like, they're very green that way. They're self-sufficient right. and there's an endless supply of it. Not to mention the weight of the average passenger times a thousand passengers. That's a lot of fuel. <laughs> That's a lot of fuel is right. Who would, it's, all right, I could understand to some people who are fans of the cruise concept, that would sound good, like three years of something like we love. I think aren't even they three years? Dude. At sea? That is insane. Because and ports, which are worse? I mean, are they going 
are they repeating any stops or are you going because when you go to any place that hosts a cruise ship is so sick of tourists you are seeing the same trinket shops you're seeing the same fucking west african guy selling dolls you know uh diarrhea constant constant anyway let's get to science uh no let's skip science and go to oh no we got we got one in science all right science and health the the category is science and health oh good the cloud would clarify that okay Uh, magnetic balls sold online by Walmart have been recalled for being an ingestion hazard for children. How many years do we have to have like companies that not figure out that you don't put something that, um, so this magnet stones building blocks do not meet the federal regulations. Uh, the spherical magnets sold online exclusively by Walmart uh, are stronger than permitted, and one or more fit within the agency's small parts cylinder, which is approximately the size of a young child's throat. When huh. high-powered magnets are swallowed, the ingested magnets can attract each other or to another metal object and become lodged in the digestive system. This can result in twisting or blockage of the intestines, infection, blood poisoning, and death. Merry Christmas, Billy. So. But weaker magnets are fine that children swallow? That's yeah, well, with the, here. well, with the strong ones, it's like, well, why is Billy hugging the fridge? He's been <laughs> hugging the fridge for like an hour and a half since we gave him his presents. <laughs> <laughs> All the silverware flies down there. At yeah. Dinner. Billy, yeah. Why, why do you have my watch on your stomach? Give me my fucking watch back. That's not funny. All right, I have to get this barking dog the fuck out of here. Hold on one second. I can't even hear him. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, you do that. I'll read the next story. All right. But then you won't know what it is. No, I'm, I'm all here. I can multitask, man. All right. Uh, workers at a popular chip company have allegedly been experiencing skin irritation and difficulty breathing due to a flaming hot seasoning, a union has claimed. The United Workers Union... Uh, claims workers at Smith's Chips Factory in Adelaide have raised concerns over the substances used to flavor Doritos Flamin' Hot Corn Chips. Doritos states their Flamin' Hot Supreme Corn Chips marketed for their spiciness bring a bold, cheesy taste with full flavor. Ignite your taste buds with Flamin' Hot Cheese Supreme, the back of the package reads. I was kind of listening. What are these, Cheetos magnets? They're Doritos. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're Doritos that are so hot that the skin of the workers is burning off. I mean, is that, is that what kids really are? Kids are into hot stuff these days. No, it's a whole thing. They really are. And first of all, everyone is. And I did notice that you would think in Spain... Uh, I think America is overdoing it with the spices more than even countries that are well known for having spicy food. Right. And also, am I wrong? I mean, my feeling is, uh, first of all, I'm a lightweight when it comes to spices. It's no surprise there. So fine. But it's kind of like, oh, give me your whatever food it is. Do you have Cholula or whatever the four top spices are? Do you have that? Because I am going to fucking empty half the bottle on there. And it's like, one, isn't that... Now you're not even tasting what the food was meant to right. be tasted. Like right. it's almost like, w w would you do that with salt? No, that's just what, mounds of it on there. Yes, yeah, spices are meant to get your salivary glands going. It's sort of like it accentuates the food. It brings out the flavor in the food. But we were at a Mexican restaurant in San Diego a few weeks ago with my nephew, who was uh, in the Navy SEALs or almost, and uh, <laughs> toughest guy I ever met. And they said they have a, a, a pepper that they won't give to anybody. And he demanded they bring it to him. And he didn't take a bite of it. He put the whole fucking thing in his mouth. And he started asphyxiating. Is that when he can't breathe? He yes. couldn't breathe. He had to leave the restaurant. He was tears rolling down his face, coughing. 
It took him like 20 minutes to get normal again. It was, I forget what it was called. Um, it's some famous chili. Um, Not a ghost pepper, is it? Maybe it was a ghost pepper. Yeah. Well, there's hotter where they keep developing or finding hotter ones. Yeah. But uh, I don't get it. And I know it makes me sound like the oldest white guy in the world, but I really, I just don't get the excessive uh, spices that, you know, hot spices that people are putting on. I don't get the hot spices. I don't get the cold plunge. I don't get the triathlons. (laughs) Life, life is pleasant. Just live it and die. All this the heavy other stuff. breathing to you cry excessively. Yeah. That yeah. also. Come on. Uh, all right. Well, I know you're on a time clock, so let's get to the obituaries. Yeah, I got to run to the airport. And that's all, folks. Tom Smothers was uh. half of the innovative comedy folk duo, the Smother Brothers, with his brother Dick. Um, you know, they started as folk singers. They weren't comedians at first. And Did they got really... That. They got really big in the 50s in San Francisco at the Purple Onion, the, the famous Purple Onion, which yeah. is actually the club where a lot of famous comedians got started. Uh, Joan Rivers started there, uh, Lenny Bruce. And, um, and so anyway, they, they, they got pretty big and they played Jack Parr, Judy Garland show, and then they got their own TV show and it was in the form of a sitcom, The Smother Brothers Show, which didn't work, so then they made it into like uh, the, the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Um, they were so innovative. They were doing political satire on the air like nobody had ever done it before. And they went hard. And they were constantly getting um, notes from CBS that they ignored. They were really ballsy. They had on music. They had the Doors on, Simon and Garfunkel, Ray Charles, Joan Baez, The Who. Um, So it had a lot of young viewers. And it was really like, you know, people like I'm a big believer that comedy should should just be funny. And with (laughs) few exceptions. And they are one of the exceptions. There are some people that have really delivered a message with their comedy that might have actually gotten through to people. Oh, they uh, dug in and um, threatened to walk. And I think they did walk. They did walk, yeah. Against the censorship, yeah. And they they were really well known for that. Like they wanted, it was very, their, their satire was very, very important to them. And I think at that time, I mean, they made a lot of noise that way. And I think, uh, I don't know, there was just such integrity about what they did. They're really impressive. And just very funny. And they... Uh... They didn't ultimately get canceled by CBS, but they, you know, they had full careers after that. They did a lot of TV and movies and, uh, and really set the stage for a lot of comedy that followed, you know, from Mr. Show to, um, you know, a lot of the stand up comics at the time took their cue from them about political stuff, Mort Saul and all those San Francisco guys. And I think um, Steve Martin, one of Steve Martin's first jobs was writing uh, on that show. Oh, no shit. Really? I, bu- I believe. Yeah. And uh, who else did he, did he He met someone there. Might have been Dave Osborne. I'm mean, super Dave. I forget what it is, but it was well known. It was like a very good. It was the highest writing comedy writing uh, gig at the time. I Could believe. it have been Richard Pryor? I don't think. Although I don't know, but up. we should look that up. But right. anyway, the famous, you know, explosion after my generation with the who, that performance, that's their show. That's the Smothers Brothers. Oh, yeah. Um, Bob, uh, Bob Einstein. Einstein. Yeah. Uh, uh, Super Dave Osborne was a writer yep. on the show. Carl Gottlieb, who's pretty famous. Um, yeah, Steve Martin. Steve uh, Martin might have won an Emmy there too. I'm, I'm for writing. I'm not sure. Okay, so but they uh, were great. Yeah. Anyway, let's cheer up. Time to cheer up. <laughs> Little crinkle to cheer, and then we go straight into Hagger, who's putting his son to bed. His son's wearing a helmet with horns in it to bed, so it gives you a sense of how dangerous those times were. Dad. Do you have a Viking story you could tell me? And Hagger goes, sure. There was once a gentle giving Viking. And the son goes, no fairy tales. And then the third frame, he goes, just tell me about the raping and the pillaging and the raping, daddy. Is that what it says? 
Well, I, I'm imagining. It's not really there, but I'm imagining. Imagine Dad, the real the stories. story of when you first raped mommy. <laughs> Once upon a time, your mother yeah. was a virgin. Uh, all right, now we get the lock horns. Leroy's coming out of the bank. He says to Loretta, I can get the loan, but I'll need to leave an article of clothing with my scent for the hounds. <laughs> I don't think he's getting that. Uh, and the next one, they're at the marriage counselor. They spend a lot of time at a marriage counselor for a couple that really can't seem to get along. And she says, I wouldn't say Leroy has changed since we got married. More like he mutated. I like did that. Did I do that one before? I never did that, did I? Uh, I don't think so. All right, it was in this There week. are a lot, though. Like, I wouldn't say, you know, Leroy's this, but it's this. Yeah. Right, right, right. All right. Um, and then somebody sent this in. Mark Swisher sent in a family circus. It's an actual family circus. It's a New Year's Eve party. And uh, the mom's got on a pretty, like, happening 70s style dress. And people are drinking in the, in the living room. And yeah. little Leroy is saying to the mother, I can't go to bed. Mr. Yost is sleeping in it. So let's unpack that for a second. Yeah. I is mean, he fucked up is it, or is he a child molester? Is it post coital? Like, is he, is he in bed after I wanted to, yeah, what, what the, that little blonde boy, uh, I wonder if his, his pajamas are soiled oh, by Yost. Maybe Yost set the record for taking off uh, Charlie's pants the fastest. <laughs> Maybe the little boy's bummed that Yost fell asleep. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Something, what do we got Please, here? anything to make Family Circus more entertaining. All right, we got the far side. What we got is you see little Bo Peep. You see her little whatever that stick is, and you see her bun and all that, and she's in a kitchen all alone, and she is chowing down with a knife and fork. And the caption reads, that evening, with her blinds pulled, Mary had three helpings of corn, two baked potatoes, extra bread, and a little lamb. <laughs> there you go. Mary had now, a little lamb. Now I get it. Now they're going to be really hard to find. They'll be, <laughs> they'll be in her toilet in about an hour and a half. Oh, no. Paella. Uh, Blondie is reading the paper with her back to Dagwood, which is appropriate. His watch dings, and she goes, dear, what keeps dinging? And he goes, the doctor told me to download an app on my watch that would remind me to get up and move. She goes, good idea. And he goes, yeah, but if I'm not going to listen to him, why would I listen to my watch? How about a ding that says, fuck your wife, you fucking louse? How about a ding that says, do a chore? How about a ding that says, give her a compliment or make dinner? How about a pow when Blondie blows her head off because right. she just can't take it anymore? Yes, when her right finger is swollen and chapped from finger blasting herself because you can't throw a move <laughs> okay. on Okay. Whoa. Hey, now. Whoa, now. All right, listen. You got to get out of here, Mike. We got to send you off to right New Orleans. Second, New Orleans. Uh, Head to New Orleans. It's going to be fun. New Year's. We're going to remind people to... Uh, take advantage of our sponsorship deals. Game time app, use code PAPERS for $20 off. And then you're also going to go to everyplate.com slash uh, 49 papers. And enter, slash, wait, everyplate.com slash podcast, entering code 49 papers. Make sure you do it right so we get credit. Okay. Um, Mike, anything you want to plug before you want to go? Yeah, send in your, uh, if you want us to make predictions for the new year, send those in. We're going to do that the next show. Oh, and We're hey, what be... about koozies? Do we have koozies left to sell? We have koozies. I, I had to buy a third uh, shipment of koozies. We got them. You're going to take some on the road? Yes. And koozies, let us baby. know if you didn't get them. I know we said that last time, but let us know. We're going to make good on every koozie. We're getting tremendous feedback. People love their koozies. They're sending pictures with themselves with the koozies. Uh, they're all signed and they're cheap. Ten bucks all in. You don't have to send pay shipping. to your door. Right. Sent to your door. And uh, if you go to the Fitz Dog website, you can find out how to uh, send money by Ze Zen Venmo to Mike. Venmo, we'll buddy. All right, Mike. Have a great trip. Same. Uh, happy New Year, my man. All right. Happy New Year. God bless. Take it each.
Tigerish. I can't believe it's time for the Sunday papers once again. But more importantly, we got corrections, baby. Woo! We got corrections, baby. Won't you read all about it? My SD card was full. Running off the Zoom microphone this whole time We got corrections, baby How else are we gonna spread the disinformation? Gonna get to the front page Sunday papers, baby How we gonna do Sunday papers